Welcome. We are here again with Advocate Matthews Jim Nedumbara, the man who is at the center of the controversy of uh, the judgment passed on 12th March by the Supreme Court, where he is convicted of contempt uh, for taking the name of Fali Nariman in the course of a proceeding of a writ petition. And the judgment is for the writ petition. Now, the writ petition was filed on the, on behalf of National Lawyers Campaign for Judicial Transparency and Reforms, which has 14,000 members who are first generation lawyers all around India. Uh, Mr. Nedumbara, can you tell us what this is all about? What is National yes, Ca yes. Lawyers Campaign? So, I will not comment upon the judgment aspect. So, National Lawyers Campaign is probably the first ever organization of this nature anywhere in this country. And the motivation, the reason is, in the temples of justice, there certainly is discrimination exists. The, the life of a first generation lawyer, however talented he is, is extremely miserable. And look at, see, I would rather, the, the statistics are there to see. Say, 95% of the legal fraternity belongs to the first generation lawyers. But you find hardly any, any representation for them in the higher judiciary. Say the, the the past and the future chief justices all belong to the either the sons of former chief justices or the former educated generals, and all belong to the elite class. Elite class. The first generation lawyers hardly have no representation at all. So the what is the reason? I would say the collegium system of appointment of judges is to, to a large extent responsible for the same. And the, what is the solution? The solution is. See, like, as we do in the civil service, the, 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 the IAS, IPS, IFS, all the vacancies are notified. They all eligible are entitled to apply. Then it is screened, there's a preliminary test is there, there is a, then the main examination is conducted, the, the return test is conducted. Then the most meritorious and the deserving are selected. The same can be adopted in the, in the matter of appointment of the judges of the high courts and supreme court and many countries even in england the office of the august office of the chief justice of the united kingdom is advertised and the attorney general applied for it so therefore you know the same system we need to adopt for it the vacancy in the office of the judges of the high court so too of the supreme court of, and even including the chief justice of india can be advertised and applications can be invited maybe that the attorney general may apply or maybe very eminent lawyers may apply. So therefore then the question is when if there are too many applications, how to screen it? And that is not a difficult issue. There can be certain screening methods by which the the applications could be uh, streamlined and uh, the right person could be appointed. So then is the, this the central cause of uh, that you espouse, that national... There are many many Lawyers things. See, then response. the first first is the collegium system appointment of judges. Then, then see, see as important as equally important is the 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 bar bar and bench together constitute to be the one uh, so the two wheels of the ch the chariot of justice. So lawyers have a great important role. <coughs> and today, see only the senior lawyers, the senior lawyers, they they alone they they alone have a meaningful role in the higher judiciary. So then, who are the senior lawyers? 95% of the senior lawyers are either the kid and kid, a few judicial and legal families, dynasties, I'm sorry to say, maybe a strong expression I'm using. And this is the reason why, because the first generation lawyers are never able to come up in the ladder. How many ladder. dynasties would you reckon? So I don't want it to be... The number, those, just over... Uh, so maybe uh, around, uh, say, 200 families. Uh, literally run the Indian judiciary. The, the, the eighty percent of the senior lawyers and eighty percent of the judges uh, is drawn from the maximum of two hundred families. So there, see, there are three hundred thirty crores of uh, I mean, uh, the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe people belong into that category. They don't have a single representation. So therefore, see our democratic legitimacy of the institutional judiciary is subsided only when we have representation of all class of, see from the common man children, when they become judges, they reach the higher judiciary, then only we can claim to be a, a truly 
uh, to democracy, to the, what judiciary is democratic. Then other, so, so the core issues are an open selection by notification of vacancies. And second is the abolition of the system of designation of lawyers as senior lawyers. What is the need? It there's no need at all. This creates monopoly. And see the current judges appoint judges, judges and the the judges alone, judges themselves appoint the senior lawyers. So therefore, it's all about you need to get uh, um, you know the majority votes on the the the, on the full court. Then only you are, you are designated. Then the other issue is video recording of the court proceedings. So video recording of the court proceedings, this is one war which I have been fighting for a fairly long time. And uh, probably I should say the, the, the triggering point for Safar Azam concerned was some absolutely absurd in a, in a method, I mean, effort to uh, character assassinate me. That everybody knows that what it is. That is one reason why I, with all, uh, with all, uh, you know, with the courage I could muster, with the support I muster, we pursued the uh, pursued the objective of the integration of the video recording of the co proceedings of all courts and tribunals in this country. So, if you have video recordings, one is it will ensure that the if there is a contempt that happens in the court, it will be seen and properly recorded, and therefore it will be there. There will be proof. Yes, because you know, once the video recording system comes, everybody everybody is accountable. See, yes. the lawyer, the lawyers misbehave. Sometimes, sometimes judges also uh, sometimes uh, do not behave as is expected of them. So, the lawyers, the litigants, the parties, everybody, everybody. See, is uh, when it is before the camera. See, everybody feels that I am accountable, and that will bring in a lot of discipline and transparency. And it is <coughs> today. See, the, you are in Delhi. Sorry, the, 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 you, are, you are in Bombay, your case is in Delhi. So what transferred in the court, you get a copy of the video, then you will come to know what my lawyer argued, what questions the court asked, what transferred. So this is this is done in almost all, everywhere in the world. So how do people join with NLC? Can a common man join or is it only see, the lawyers who can see, join? Uh, see, initially we formed it as a National People's Campaign for Judicial Transparency. Then you know we then you know mostly it is lawyers only came forward, and therefore we had to you know rename it as a national peop, uh, lawyers campaign for judicial transparency. But there are a lot of lot of lay people who take a lot of interest in the NLC. So NLC, the spread is named National Lawyers Campaign for Judicial Transparency, as a layman section, lay people who are members. So therefore, and law students, lay people. And today I find that it is, there, there is a major support for us. And there are many other issues. Like, you know, see, uh, the judges should enjoy absolute immunity. They should have all the protection. And the lawyer should also have all the protection, immunity. And therefore, the absolute immunity, concept of absolute immunity, which the judges, judges enjoy today, I believe the time has come to revisit it. That they should enjoy have all immunity and protection, but at the same time, it is not. It is not as if that uh, the uh, where the immunity is not misused at all. That is one of our objectives. Uh, then you know the strengthening of the uh, civil courts. That is a subject which may require some time to explain. I would only say that the constitution founding fathers visualized the civil courts to be a court of plenary jurisdiction. Which is a, civil courts are contemplated to be the truly constitutional court. I will explain in two, three words more. When the, before the constitution came into existence, the virus and the constitutionality of an act of parliament could have been questioned. And the forum was the civil court, ordinary civil court. In 1942, CPC was amended. Order 27A was incorporated, making it obligatory for the, in such matters, a notice to be given to the attorney general and the attorney general in the case of the, if the legislation is of the province. Then after the, after the, the Article 372 of the Constitution says the law prevailing as of the date of the commencement of the Constitution will continue to be the law of the land. So therefore, when the Constitution came into existence, civil courts could have declared an act of parliament as unconstitutional. The same position continued. And now in 2000, 1951, the CPC was amended, a proviso was added to Section 113 of the CPC making it obligatory for the civil court to refer to the question of constitutionality to the high court. 
But the civil court does not necessarily always mean that subordinate judiciary. The High Court of Bombay has original civil jurisdiction. Delhi High Court, Calcutta High Court, Madras High Court. So therefore, the constitutionality of a statute to be questioned, the most appropriate forum to do so is an ordinary civil suit. But in actual practice, you know, people used to invoke Article 226 and Article 32 of the Constitution. And uh, then and in, invoking the set articles, a declaratory remedies were sought. And today, if I say that the constitutionality of a, a act of parliament could be challenged in a civil court, uh, most people are considered to be an incorrect proposition. So your position as a national lawyer's campaign is that it should be that uh, civil courts can... Hear yes, because of... today, see, today, uh, I'm not... Uh, so don't don't mistake me for criticizing the institutional judiciary. Today, who can come to a high court? Who can go to a Supreme Court? Article 32 petition, <clears> that only written data or the right can invoke. Accessibility to the common yes, man yes, is an yes. issue. Who can come to the high court? And again, you see, for a man in uh, far of Satara or in Maharashtra or even Pune or so far of places, he has to come to Bombay to file a petition. And if the civil courts, actually they have, it has a jurisdiction. And uh, if the proviso, uh, which has been introduced in 1951, if it is, it is deleted, repealed, then the civil courts could be uh, invested or could be, uh, you know, con in a make function as a truly constitutional court, which was what the founding fathers visualized. Okay, so four, just to recap, yes, the four causes that I can... Uh, I there are many causes, mention. 14 agendas are there. Okay, okay. but four, because uh, yes, I'll yes. be short. We yes. Let's just talk about four, just yes. to recap. Yes. The first is that uh, the collegium system of judicial appointment should be abolished. It's a judge's appointment. So the, should be, even if the collegium uh, is, to, to, is to continue, the collegium should notify the vacancies, invite mm -hmm. applications and references. It should be an open system. Yes, not a so that system. lawyers practicing in the district court can apply. The, in the, say, the lawyer, suppose a lawyer is practicing in Pune, the high court, judges in the Bombay High Court may not even know. And you cannot say that the lawyers in the practicing the subordinate courts are, the courts are uh, you know, they, are, they don't deserve yeah, it. Yes, they don't deserve yeah. it. So that is one. Yes. And the second is that that senior designation should not be from a small, select, connected, so influential uh, aristocracy, if one may use the The same word. example as a very competent lawyer in Pune. And, you know, he, he will he ever be considered for designation. For senior designation. So therefore, senior designation, current system, almost 80% of the, of the lawyers who practice in the district court and office are completely excluded. Okay, so this is the second thing. Yes. And the third then point. The, the point is, what is the need for this this designation? Senior designation. What is the need? It, it's only, it, it leads to monopoly. It's a price tag. <clears throat> you are, if you are in Delhi, you are a lawyer. If you are, a, if you are not a designated lawyer, you are nobody. That is undemocratic. It is, it is pernicious. Don't forget about the lawyer's interest. I am talking from the point of view of the litigant public. The institution of judiciary is for the people. Not for lawyers and judges. So you would, the NLC would uh, happily say that uh, NLC is a actually it's a, a people's <coughs> campaign. Yes, and I'm, we are if the more people join the campaign, we will rename it as National People's Campaign for Judicial Transparency. Right. And I was not the president of the NLC. In fact, no, I conceived it. It was the lay people who were made the president and the office bearers of the. A people's campaign, okay. but still, you know, then the difficulty was when we had to go to a, a high courts, even to distribute a pamphlet. Lawyers used to object because they are litigants. So therefore, therefore, we for make it work, we convert it into a people okay. a lawyers campaign. So the third, third one is uh, I forgot what was the third point. The fourth is uh, that video, video, video recording. Yes, audio video recording. So to keep uh, accountability and transparency. Yes. Uh, in each and every courtroom. Yes. yes. For all parties concerned, judges, yes. litigants, lawyers, everyone. And it's a record. So all this and records. Good record. All our our courts, civil courts are a court of record. And the <laughs> Superior Courts, High Court and Supreme Court, all are courts of record. Courts of records. So the, the record with absolute perfection is made available to litigants at a zero cost. Very right. minimal cost. The entire courts in India are connected with the National Informatics Center. So therefore, there is no difficulty in implementation. Right. And uh, yes. Okay. And the fourth is accessibility of uh, the con uh, 
Yeah, the constitutional remedies. No, we have to reassert that the constitutional court, the true constitutional court, which the, the, the founding fathers conceived was the civil court. Was the civil court, which is closer to the common man. Yes. So he does yes. not have to great, travel yes. great distances. Someone from the interiors of Maharashtra yes. Yes. does and, not find himself uh, disabled. He will be able to. And uh, then nearby. you know the other things which I wanted to say the, uh, you know the total the absurdity of the concept called the PIL. You know what is what was contemplated as pro bono litigation. We are all for that, not 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 for PAS. Then the another concept is basis structure. These are all like you know. I'm sorry to say, I guess the first principles of jurisprudence. But in a small uh, talk like this, I cannot uh, I mean go into those issues. Right. So there are many other issues. Other issues. These were the four core issues yes, which we yes. have mentioned at yes, this yes, point. The, the core, this top more core, <coughs> core is issue is the institutional judiciary is for the people. But not for lawyers and judges. Lawyers and judges are certainly, you know, integral part of it, but but not for them. It is meant to serve the people. It's supposed yes, to yes. serve justice to yes, people. Yes. And right now, those yes. stakeholders, the lawyers and yes. judges, yes. Uh, seem to be uh, dominant in the scheme of things. And the common man has yes. been. And we know the lawyers and judges are <clears throat> servants of justice. Yeah. Uh, servants of justice. We are not its masters. Right, so yes. that is to bring the center, to bring the common man center stage on the judiciary. Yes, yes. That is the yes. purpose of this. And I believe, and I may appeal to all, all brother and my countrymen, to support, join the cause of the NLC. <laughs> the NLC is for you. Is your cause? Thank you. Yes, please join NLC and speak out openly about. Let us have an open discussion on the judiciary from the lawyer's perspective and from the common man's perspective also thank you very well thank, thank you, you. Thank thank you. you.